Hey there, YouTube. Welcome to Big Mike Beard Wisdom. So, normally I use that little two-button code reader, but at the moment I kind of need to be able to read some more important information. And this little scan tool here is kind of handy, but it's one of those things where it's an older tool. It only goes up to a certain year, and it can't be updated anymore because it's just too old. Now, the nice thing with this is that it can read older vehicles and normally can read them pretty well so real quick we'll take a quick peek at codes we were able to clear the airbag light in the last video so now we're going to be taking a good look at the check engine light and you can either go obd2 or engine for this type of situation so i'm going to go right in the engine obd2 is kind of a generic code system so any of the data is going to be the universal OBD2 language that every vehicle after 1996 is supposed to kind of follow whereas this might be a more advanced setup so you can see in here we've got an evap emission leak control system leak detected dash B it's current so it's happening now So real quick, let's pop back out of here. Let's take a quick look at the data. And then PIDs are normally like parameter IDs. So that's every data item that's checking. So let's go entire data list. I don't know how much data is going to be in here, but it could be interesting. All right. So this is kind of handy. You've got mill status on. So that's check engine light currently on. That's correct. Looks like next up is throttle position sensor percentage is at 9%. So if I were to blip the throttle real quick. I guess hold the throttle. <laughs> so every vehicle is different as to how fast it updates these signals and stuff. So you can see things change as you change it. Fuel trims are both trying to cut fuel. And the weird part about this car is that even though it's a V6, it only has like the one bank essentially. So it's really kind of strange for a car with a V6, at least for me. But when they're trying to pull fuel trim like that, it means it's getting too much fuel in there. So it is running closed loop, which it's looking at the sensors. And then real quick, I'm just going to clear this code. Sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes you don't. For the airbag, I definitely followed that. For this, I'm not. So light just turned off. Cleared the code fine. And I'm not expecting that code to come back right away because your EVAP is interesting in that it's got to meet a certain criteria in order to run. So it's got to be so warm outside. The engine's got to be at such a temp. The engine operating range has to be somewhere <laughs> that it's acceptable. And then it looks at a few other things. And then it goes, okay, now if I open this, 
what happens if I close this what happens and is things doing what I expect it to do so there's a bit of logic to setting those codes so they won't come back right away I would probably expect that you know first like 10 miles or something like that if I've got a bad component which I'm kind of suspecting I do under the hood because there's a purge valve that's kind of loud up there so I'm wondering if either we have an leak somewhere or the purge valve might be kind of going bad on me you can see pretty easy clearing the code old code readers like this are kind of handy especially for old cars that they're meant for Ooh. and something I wasn't paying attention to earlier is that there's an IAT so that's intake air temp sensor and you can see it's reading 149 degrees Fahrenheit air that it's sucking in We give it a little bit of gas. That should cool down a little bit because I'm just sitting here parked and idled. So this would be really kind of cool if I do want to get a cold air intake to kind of take it for a test drive, read the intake air temp sensor as I'm going down the road with the stock setup versus the intake air temp sensor going down the road with a cold air setup. And Another way to clear like a check engine light that's pretty easy that wouldn't have cleared the airbag light in the last video is basically just shutting the vehicle off, touching the two battery terminals together, that way it shorts everything out and drains any residual power and then rehooking the battery back up. Sometimes just disconnect the battery or reset the code, but touching the terminals together definitely resets it. So if you don't have a little bit of a step up code reader like this one or like that other code reader that I have that's just a two button one you can always clear the codes that way too hope you guys enjoyed the video feel free to like and subscribe and I'll check you next time